Hey guys, today we're gonna be talking about the Bromothymol Blue Cellular Respiration Lab. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is talk about the setup. So I have a solution of Bromothymol Blue, and as you can see, it is blue, right? It is a blue solution, Bromothymol Blue. And I have some test tubes set up here that are just numbered one, two, and three. And I have a straw, okay? The straw is how I'm going to put my breath into the solution. Okay, I also have writing utensils and the lab sheet for this got a little bit messed up for my kiddos, but basically what you're gonna wanna do is you have three main stages. You have a resting stage after one minute of exercise and after two minutes of exercise. So you're going to be releasing your, uh, your carbon dioxide into your solutions those three different times, so three times for each to get an average. So I am at a resting rate right now. So what I would do first is get my heart rate, which you can just measure, okay? My breath rate, how many breaths I'm taking per minute, how many um, heartbeats per minute for the first one. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is measure the amount of carbon dioxide that I'm producing based on a color change reaction. So bromothymol blue is a pH indicator. Okay, and when you are breathing, you're releasing carbon dioxide. And as you're blowing bubbles through the straw into our solution here, you're releasing that carbon dioxide into the solution. So when carbon dioxide meets up with water, it creates carbonic acid, which is a weak acid. And since bromothymol blue is a pH indicator, as it's being exposed to that acid, it's going to experience a color change. It's going to experience a color change to be more of a, like a yellowy green color. So you can see the color differences here right, that obviously one is different than the other. So this one had the carbonic acid in it, which is why it changed color, okay? So that's how bromothymol blue works. So obviously, as you're breathing, you're releasing carbon dioxide and that would cause the color change. So you would do just resting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to blow bubbles into these first three tubes here, and I'm gonna write down how long that color change took. Should just take a couple of seconds. Okay, and then I'm gonna exercise for one minute. So doing jumping jacks, push up something for one minute. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm going to blow bubbles into three more tubes. I have a whole bunch set up here and on another rack as well. Okay, so I'm gonna blow into three more tubes and I'm going to measure how long it took that reaction to occur. I'm also gonna gather my heart rate and my breath rate after one minute of exercise. And then I'll repeat the same process for two minutes of exercise. So again, heart rate, breath rate, and then blow into three more tubes to measure your carbon dioxide. Okay, you're going to be measuring that because the color change should be happening faster or slower. What do you think? As you're exercising more, should the bromothymol blue turn yellow green faster or slower? If you said faster, that's correct, because obviously you're respiring at a higher rate and you also are releasing more carbon dioxide into the solution, so the reaction should happen a lot faster. Okay, it is a very fast reaction to begin with, just depending on the level of um, concentration of bromothymol blue that you have. I have a pretty weak one here, so it reacts pretty quickly. Um, so I'm just gonna go through and show you how to do this. So I have my first tube, it has bromothymol blue in it. I have a straw. I'm going to just obviously don't smash your straw against the bottom because if you try to blow bubbles into that, you're gonna shoot all the solution up at your face. So I'm just gonna have my straw kind of like neutrally in the middle. Okay, and I'm gonna hold up at the top so I can hold the straw, I can hold the, the, um, the test tube, but then you can also still see that there's the blue solution. I'm not covering it, okay? Because then you can't see that the reaction has occurred. So I'm gonna start my timer and I'm going to be blowing bubbles in through this tube at the same time to measure how long it takes for this reaction to occur. So let's see. Okay, so that was about like six seconds. So let me show you here. You can obviously see the color change and then this was the original test tube, right? So that's a color change that we're experiencing. And again, that color change has occurred because your carbon dioxide that you're releasing into the water has created carbonic acid and bromothymol blue has reacted with that carbonic acid to create this color change because it's a pH indicator and acids would obviously be a change in pH if you're introducing an acid into the solution. So that was about like 6.7 seconds. So we're gonna say that that was about like seven seconds. Okay, and then you would do it again. Oh, I have to start this. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, that was about six seconds that time. Yes, it comes up the top and drips, that's okay. Okay, but you can see that we're having color changes occur here compared to the original, right? So you would do that three times and get an average for each. So mine was like seven the first time, like six the second time, it's gonna be an average near six or seven, right? And then after I exercise, I'm gonna come back and we can do this again and we can see how those numbers compare. Okay, so after one minute of exercise, again, you'd get your heart rate, you'd get your breath rate, um, breaths per minute, beats per minute. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing again and see if there's a change in the time that it takes the solution to change color. That took about four seconds. Um, again, you can see the color change, took about four seconds. So that's a little bit um, a little bit faster, okay? I'm gonna go, you would do this three times and get the average, but I'm gonna go exercise for two minutes and then come back and do it again and see if there's a difference the second time around. Okay, so two minutes, you'd get your heart rate again, beats per minute, you'd get your breaths per minute, and now we're gonna do this color change again. It took about 3.8 seconds, okay? So obviously, like I said, here's the comparison for the color. So we have bromothymol blue, but in the presence of just oxygen in its natural state, okay, it's going to be blue. That's why I got its name. And then for our, um, our second tube here, we have a lot of carbonic acid that's being created as your carbon dioxide mixes with the water that was in the tube. Okay, obviously it was a bromothymol blue solution in the tube, but that's bromothymol powder mixed with water. So in the presence of water, you'd create carbonic acid here, which is then going to turn this greenish yellowish color um, as the pH is changing for the solution. So you can see a nice little comparison there. So as the respiration rate increased with exercise, you can see that the reaction, it happened just a little bit faster each time, but that's still showing that you're respiring more, you're breathing more, right? Which means that you're releasing more carbon dioxide Okay, and if you're releasing more carbon dioxide, that means that you're also creating what other product for cellular respiration? You'd be creating more energy called ATP, right? Because like, like I said, you can't just like look at somebody and say, oh, you're making a lot of ATP right now. You have no idea, right? But you can tell someone's breathing rate. And if they're breathing faster, then they're creating more carbon dioxide, which must mean that they're also creating more ATP. Their body is doing work, okay? So that's how those two things correlate. So that's why you took your breathing rate, you took your heart rate, and you measured the carbon dioxide production based on how fast the reagent changed here. So how fast the bromothymol blue had a color change. And we saw that with resting, to one minute of exercise and two minutes of exercise, the time it took decreased, which makes sense because you're releasing more carbon dioxide the more that you've worked out, okay? So that's the kind of like the gist of this whole thing. So as I said, what does that indicate about ATP? If you're creating more carbon dioxide and that's a product of the reaction that we're studying, ATP is also a product. So if you're making more of one product, that means that the reaction is happening very fast. So then you're also creating more of the other product. So that's the overall gist of this lab. Um, like I said, the lab table got a little bit messed up, but basically you should have for resting one minute and two minutes of exercise, exercise you should have the trial one, two, and three with the average of your um, the time it took your tubes to change color. Okay, I just did a couple here to show you what was gonna happen. Um, same thing for one minute, you would blow bubbles into your tubes three tubes and get the average of the time it took for the color to change. Same thing for after two minutes of your exercise and then you compare that data. You should see that your respiration rate increased. You should see that your heart rate increased and you should see that the time it took the bromothymol blue solution to turn yellowy green should have decreased because the reaction was happening much faster because you're creating more carbon dioxide and therefore more ATP. So that was the point of this. I hope that that makes some sense. Sorry again about the tables being a little bit messed up, but you can fix them according to this for your lab um, in your notebook. But I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.